Welcome to Faith, Reason, and Geekdom. I'm your Jenny Flexer, Roger. My brothers and sisters in Christ, join me every other Wednesday as we work out these three perspectives in our everyday lives. That's what I call Christian Jenny Flexing. Naden, thank you once again for joining me. Today we're going to do a hybrid, a debate slash dialogue on Mary, the Virgin Mary, and we're going to get into all types of it. I mean, this isn't a small question. This is hundreds of years or whatever you want to say. Uh, there's been many, many topics, books, uh, debates, uh, lectures, whatever you can say. So we're not going to solve this issue in one episode. So a uh, spoiler alert right now at my position is going to be uh, why we should uh, pray to Mary and give her honor. Uh, Lenaden is going to have the opposite view on why we should uh, give her honor or pray to her. So that that's going to be the setup and it's all going to be uh, within the confines of Mary. I'm sure little other little tiny things will pop up, but we're going to stay mainly focused on that type of area uh, we're going to be speaking on. So uh, once again, thank you guys for listening and thank you, Lenaden. Could you go ahead and give us another brief introduction? We had our first debate um, on a video that was on TikTok and a lot of people enjoyed that. I really enjoyed our conversation. It's hard to find somebody that's respectful and charitable, but still believes what they believe in. So thank you again for coming. Uh, Can you give us a little brief introduction? Sure. Uh, once again, thank you for having me on. Um, <clears throat> I am, I guess you'd say, someone who doesn't have formal training in uh, theological matters. Uh, I'm more of a self-taught, uh, self-read, I guess you could call Protestant, would be the, the, the label people give to those that are former Catholics and have left the Roman church. But I like to consider myself a born again Christian, Bible believing. Uh, a lot of times people call, say, a sola scriptura, um, where we search the scriptures for answers to any problems we have instead of going to the Vatican, the, the Pope, or our priests for answers. Other than that, uh, I'm really looking forward to getting into this topic about Mary. And like you said, we're definitely not going to solve the problems, but we'd like to point out flatten out a few wrinkles if we can yeah thank you and again i want to say this too like yeah lenaden uh is not like a theologian never wrote on your books uh, me neither i have not i'm not i don't have a master's degree in theology or anything like that but we are both uh enthusiasts we are very much into this we love this we love uh, reading scripture theology history apologetics all that stuff like that uh we read a lot of books follow a lot of people and and read the experts again because we're not experts uh but we like to see what 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 the guys are saying and give the best evidence for and against. So we are enthusiasts. Uh, my goal is just not to commit heresies. Like if I'm like, I'm going to say something wrong, extremely wrong. And, and, you know, I don't have like i I'm not a doctorate in, in scriptural studies or anything like that. But again, we're laymen and laymen are also called to go out and evangelize and to give evidence for the reason just as as saint paul says so saint paul commands us it's not just you know the priests or the preacher it's not just them so we just want to let that know okay so uh the way it's going to work is we're going to have an eight minute opening statement uh followed by a five minute rebuttal and then after that we're going to go into the hybrid part where we're going to do a 20 minute open free-flowing discussion just a conversation i find it a lot charitable and a lot more fruitful to do this hybrid so it's going to be of course the standard debate formulaic style and the open flow open dialogue regular old conversation that we're going to have so i find it that works best i'm going to be going first uh lenaden is is going to be going after me so we're going to start the eight minutes right now as soon as i start talking and getting in uh to my opening statement here we go Again, thank you all for listening today. We're going to talk about something that is extremely important. Because if we get this wrong, we are not giving justice to our spiritual mother. 
Justice is to render one which is due, and I definitely don't want to steer anyone in the wrong direction. We should take this research seriously and thoroughly. How unjust would it be to not render honor to our spiritual mother? That warm hug of embrace that we as sons or daughters would need and love. How could we dishonor her if we can't even fathom the idea of dishonoring our earthly mothers? The great lady in the Bible, as Jesus says to Blessed Mary in John 19, verse 26 through 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her in his own home. We now are in a way become her children and her our loving mother. There is evidence from scripture, church tradition, history, and psychology as it relates to God's design for human beings. In the early church, how are you to know what you believed in? You wouldn't read the New Testament because it wasn't around. You would have to believe what the early church taught in those days. Tradition. I will show why we should give the Blessed Virgin Mary justly do honor by asking for her intercessions typology i mean these are types or categories uh, a doctrine of a theological type holding that things in christian beliefs are prefigured also symbolized by things in the old testament for example in luke chapter 1 verse uh, 43 it says and why is this granted me that the mother of my lord should come to me this is a parallel to 2 Samuel 6, 9. We see the parallel with David himself, although another mother, other parallels others show. David bringing the ark to Jerusalem, a parallel to David. And in 1 Samuel 4, the Philistines capture the ark, also known as the ark of God during a battle. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Odom, Edom, three months. And the Lord Bless Odom, Edom, and all his household. Mary, the new ark, also stayed three months with Elizabeth. We see what happens when they don't carry the ark as God has commanded. They brought it. On, they brought the. They brought the ark on a cart. God said it should be carried using poles by the Levites to prevent anyone from touching. This most sacred, sacred object in Exodus. We see this in Exodus 25. We see Deuteronomy 31, Joshua 3. The oxen stumbles and one of the attendants places his hand on the ark to steady it and was immediately struck dead. That was in 2 Samuel 6. Mary carrying our Savior would surely not be touched in any other way, just as the ark wasn't. The ark also went into the hill country of Judea like Mary, the new ark. Those are parallel from the Old and the New Testament. The ark contained God's word, Aaron's staff, and the manna. Jesus is the word made flesh, the high priest, and the bread that came down from heaven. How could you not see that Mary as the new ark, and we are to give her just honor. Exodus 40 in verse 43 through 43 through 30. I'm sorry. In Exodus 40, 34 through 38, the cloud and the glory. It says, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because of the cloud obod upon it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle throughout all of their journeys. Whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the people of Israel will go onward. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not go on onward until the day it was taken up. For throughout all the journeys, the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and fire in it by night. And the slight of all the houses of Israel. We see in Luke 1 verse 34 through 35. It says, And Mary said to the angel, How should this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born, and will be called Holy Son of God. We see this again, this 
typology, if you will, throughout the old and the new. Very much remember, just like we talked about, is uh, the word made flesh that pertains to um, the the Ten Commandments in the new Ark of the Covenant. Um, Aaron's staff would be related to like a priestly duty. Jesus is the high priest. And then the mana, the what is it, the bread, of obviously the bread of life we see as Jesus Christ. So again, I point out that again, just to show the parallels between Mary as the new Ark. And if the Ark is that precious and the ark is that to be sacred um i i I really don't see why jesus is a mother the theotokos the mother of god wouldn't be related in the same think about this how can another human dwell in the same uterus that our lord dwelled in after this would be sacrilegious it would be sacrilegious to do that also remember god is not a zero sum A prayer to the saints or Mary takes nothing away from the infinite God of the universe. It takes nothing away. He's not a zero sum. Angels in the scriptures, as we see them, they're seen as below human, right? Humans are below the angels. The angels are above, except in Luke with Mary in awe when the angel calls her. I think this shows, uh, uh, this is going to clearly show that we should pray to Mary, ask for her intercessions. We should give her honored because that's what justice means. And I think I'm going to show and I will continue to show that this holds to be true. And I'm going to go ahead and concede my time. Lenaden, I'm going to go ahead and give you your time. Two minute warning before the time up. So okay. whenever you're ready. All right, so the first thing people want to know is, is Mary worship biblical? Well, before we can even get into that question, we need to understand, is Mary worship even happening? Are Catholics worshiping Mary? Well, I'd like to start off with the definition of the word pray, because people say we pray to Mary, we don't worship her. But if you do a simple Google search, The definition of pray is address a solemn request or expression of thanks to a deity or other object of worship. Now, the fact that it says here in the beginning, address a solemn request, that stands to reason with the uh, with what Catholics like to say is we 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 request prayers, we send prayers to request and uh, whatnot from Mary. We don't necessarily directly pray to her, which means we don't worship her. But as we just heard, the definition of pray in itself is to worship something. Uh, bowing down and praying is a form of worship. Uh, Catholics bow down definitely. When I was a Catholic, I was taught as a young child to bow down in front of the statue of Mary, and we need to do this rosary, uh, pray to statues and images images of Mary, which Scripture clearly forbids. Um, <clears throat> worshiping Mary more than more than they do Jesus Christ Himself. Uh, nowhere in Scripture does it say Mary will be a mediator. Nowhere in scripture does it say to pray and give thanks and honor to a man-made carving or a man-made painting. Nowhere in scripture does it tell you to ask Mary to pray for you. Um, And the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You know, this doesn't say anything about um, Mary being Anything other, scripture doesn't say anything about Mary being anything other than a, a, a human who was greatly, or I would say was picked out of other women. Um, you know, uh, let's see. Mary was not in the beginning, but Catholicism turns her into a goddess. Mary was a sinner, just like I am a sinner just like all of us are sinners, just like Paul was a sinner, just like Joseph was a sinner, just like any other of the other prophets were sinners. She cannot atone for our sins. Jesus Christ came to die for the sins of the world, including Mary. Everyone, um, Jesus, all the worship, all the praise, all the honor 
belongs to God, and he will not let anyone take away from the glory of from the glory that is rightfully his. God will not be mocked. The Catholic Church is sending many people who some people say to hell, but I don't believe. I believe people have a chance to repent from this idolatry worship. Um, there's a lot of people who pull themselves out of the Catholic Church due to this fact. Uh, there will be no justifying sin and clear in your face biblical teachings when in front of God. Um, I guess really what I want to get down to is the fact that a lot of the things Catholics tend to bring to the table when they want to discuss Mary, uh, justify her, her deification, justify the prayers people do to her is, I, I, I really don't know why Catholics do it. Uh, it's, it's clear in scripture that we're not to have any other mediator before God except Christ Jesus, the man, Jesus. Um, and nowhere in scripture does it say anything about Mary caring our prayers, praying for us. Um, I mean, that's really, that's really what I have for the formal. I'd like to concede the time before we can get into more of a uh, cross cross talking with each other. Okay. So now I'm going to main on the rebuttals. I'm going to mainly focus on what you just said in your opening statement. Um, so I'm going to get five minutes on the clock, uh, starting once I start talking. Okay, so on the rebuttals, I, I just want to quote something from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2112. The first commandment condemns polytheism. It requires man neither to believe in nor to venerate or uh, other uh, divinities other than the one true God. Scripture consistently recalls the rejection of idols, silver or gold, the works of, of men's hands. They have mouths but do not speak, eyes but do not see. These empty idols make their worship uh, worships empty. They who make them are like them, so all so are all who trust in them. God, however, is the living God who gives life and intervenes in history. So that's from the Catholic. Uh, that's from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, condemning anyone that worships any other deities or any other supposed deities or idols. Now, I will say this: this is very true. I am Hispanic. We're both Hispanic, and it is true. I I would agree with you. I would have to agree with you on that. That there are a lot of people, especially in the South Americans and uh, uh, other places too. But in, for example, I'm Mexican American. There are a lot of people that worship Mary. But we shouldn't judge uh, the church off of of what just people what what the people that don't follow the teachings do we should just the, uh, judge the church based off the teachings capital t the teachings not what people do on their free time or what people even even if a priest does this i've heard many times a priest would say something like borderline heretical and i'm like that is not what you're supposed to believe in so but i'll just go straight to the catechism in, in church history so that i can disprove a priest and he's a priest and i'm not but even priests get it wrong Again, I do want to say that uh, latria is the act of adoration or worship due to God alone. Hyperdulia or dulia is for the Blessed Virgin and all the other saints asking for their intercessions. Yes, the dection, the de the sorry, the dictionary definition of pray says uh, address a solemn request or or expression of thanks to a deity or other objects of worship. I do want to say this too, that um, just on prayer too, if you guys, yeah, you could look up the word or like dictionaries, they do have other symbols. Like one of them is, it says prayer. Uh, what I just said, solemn requested, but then also it says an earnest hope or wish. Okay. So they use uh, one of them definition of they use is it is our prayer that the current progress on human rights will be uh, sustained. And there are other one too, like a religious service, uh, people gather in order to pray together. So it's not just one on the definition, but uh, definitely you can see that in going through it. Now, the prayer that people are the worship that people do, like I, that's idolatry in the church, 100% condemns idolatry. Now, could they do a better job? Me personally, I think they could. I think they could, but that's just a personal, a personal preference or that's a personal thing that I that I think that, yeah, 
that I, I've known people of, or known of people, not known people, but I do worship Mary as a deity. Uh, but again, that's been condemned. Uh, I quote it from the Catechism of Catholic Church. So uh, you don't have to just go to see what the people who don't follow the rules of the church do to point at that. I would point at the official teachings of the church. And again, we do believe, the church believes that prayer and worship are are distinct from another uh, prayer not is not synonymous exactly with only worship when we pray to the saints uh, we don't worship them we're not worshiping them like god god that is to alone a catholic prays to a saint and mary we ask for their intercessions ask for their helps to, just as we ask our friends to help us now i know people would say oh well it's okay and i think most almost all protestants would agree that asking for friends to pray for us is okay but we'll show that it's also deeply rooted in scripture and in the early in the, in the early church such as maccabees i know that's a different contention that uh protestants uh have a few bibles that are not there yes again so i'll set that aside for now but it is deeply rooted in scripture also it makes sense on earth too because think about this if people would try to say oh well yeah we could ask other people to pray for us uh but except they're alive and the saints are dead again um God, Jesus is not the church of the dead, but church of the living, the church of the living. We are one body, one body. What what happens to the foot happens to the hand, to the head. We are one. We are one in Christ and heaven. We are one with them. And we see them just as you see Moses coming down and, and uh, going to, 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 to Jesus and the disciples. We see many instances. We are one. We're not separate. We're all on the same team. And that's that's my time. Uh, if you want to rebuttal whatever I say, you got uh, five minutes. Speak whenever you're ready. All right. So when you speak about our spiritual mother, I'm not sure which way to take that. Uh, you know, there is no mother when it comes to the deity of the father, the spirit of, of God, the flesh born son of God the eternal word who is the flesh born son of God. Um, and then you say that we're supposed to honor the mother. Uh, I don't see anywhere in there that it mentions that we need to honor Mary other than, uh, you know, saying that she's going to be forever known as blessed, which that's what she is. No one would ever take the fact, the, the fact of what she did boring the child of Jesus, our Lord and savior, onto this earth but it was if it wasn't mary it was going to be another woman it had to be a woman so so she did not do anything outside of what a normal woman does she gave birth to a child which in itself we all know is a is a blessing from god but um that doesn't make her a deity of any sort or anyone who will carry prayers it doesn't say anything about her carrying prayers answering prayers also, you had mentioned um, John 19, 26 through 27, where you use this verse for some reason to prove the deity or not the deity, but, uh, you know, the the praying, I guess, I wouldn't say uh, the divination, but uh, you said that this is one of the things you use in your defense. Uh, and here also, it just basically, it, John 19, 26 is where he says to his mother, woman, behold your son. At 27, he says, behold your mother to John. This this is almost keeping it on an earthly basis right here. Like this woman is the one who bore me. He could have easily said, son, pray to her when you need help. But he didn't. Also, when Jesus, when they're asking him, um, Jesus, your mother and brothers are outside, you know, he could have said, he said, who are my mother and brother except those here? And he spread his arm across and spoke to the crowd that were listening to him preach. He said those were his mother and brother. He didn't say, you know, there was plenty of times in scripture Jesus could have mentioned to the people, you must pray to my mother if you want to speak to me. You are to hold her in high regard above all other humans if you want to speak to me. He doesn't say anything like that. He leaves Mary as what she is, a human who is a sinner, who needs the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross to be saved herself. Um, 
and then you had mentioned something about Mary being similar to the Ark. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're saying that because she held a baby inside of her. Um, I'm not really sure where you get the idea that she is similar to the Ark. I think a lot of that is fanciful flights of imagination from the early church fathers who like to make Mary into something more than she is. Um, and then you also say that when you pray to Mary, it takes nothing away. And when when you say it takes nothing away, I don't I don't understand where you say it, it doesn't take anything away because of the fact that when you shift your prayer, which we just found out is, you know, um, the solemn request. And then we said, or expression of thanks. And then also it says, or thanks to a deity or other object of worship. But when you, when you divert your prayers from Jesus Christ, who he said directly, pray to me and only me, I don't see how you say that doesn't take away, um, it doesn't take anything away. I mean, uh, G, uh, the first commandment is love God above all. And then the second commandment is to love your fellow man. Nowhere in the first two commandments or anywhere in the Ten Commandments does it say to pray to the mother, the human mother of Jesus Christ and worship her. Um, you know, I, I just I just don't see how. I just don't see how taking prayers away from Jesus and sending them on to Mary, whether people have or or whether Jesus is the Christ of, of the living or the dead, we understand he's the of the Christ, the Messiah of the living. That's what makes praying to Jesus more, even more important than praying to Mary, because Mary has passed to the other side. She she is no longer here. We can't pray to her and ask her to pray for us. She's the everything that every human is going to do pass away and be judged okay so that's the end of time um so that was that was done with the rebuttals now we're going to go into the the hybrid and we're going to uh, put 20 minutes on the clock and this is going to be just a free flow just a open discussion dialogue um so there's no you know who goes for we just kind of just do the dance of the dialogue um and since you went or since you ended last, let me, let me, I kind of started off a little bit and then, you, you know, you could ask me questions. I'll ask you questions and, and we'll go ahead and cross examine each other and have a discussion. So I'm going to put uh, 20 minutes on the clock. Um, three, two, one. Um, okay. So again, once again, I'll ask you to, to like, cause, cause some of the things I'm trying to hold all of what you were saying in, in my mind's eye. So if I forget some, um, I should have brought a paper with me. I didn't, I should have wrote that like a pen and paper, but I try to help it in mind. Uh, one of them I do want to attack is I think you did say something interesting. You said that you, you would agree that the church fathers, you said the church fathers could have made up the, the, the typology of Mary as the new ark. So would okay. you would you agree that it, it was like the vast majority, if not if not all, of the early church fathers would would uh, con, would contend or, or would agree with the, the, the veneration of of the Virgin Mary? Uh, would you or can you elaborate on that a little bit? I guess. Well, I guess by that what I mean is so when I when I speak of the early church fathers, we're talking about second third century. Yes. Uh, uh, theologians of the catholic or of the of the the christian faith yes um you know so that's when the bible was compiled mm -hmm. but uh and this is when they started making their i don't know uh, uh, like the apocrypha you know the, the the books that were piled together that were not in scripture and the reason why they compiled uh these books together is because it was their explanation of what the scriptures are saying because they wanted to, they wanted to teach. I, I, and what I'm saying is, they 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 came in under good intentions, wanting to teach those that were in the area what the scriptures are saying. Because we have to remember, your average person was not literate. They they could not agree. read. I agree. So they had to go to the. They had to go to the. Um, what are they? The Jewish places. The I'm thinking mosques, synagogues, no. synagogues, synagogue. There you go. Uh, they had to go to the synagogue in order to hear the scriptures because they couldn't read. You know, they're out there constantly farming, um, hunting, whatever they had to. Printing do. press wasn't around. Yeah, 
Right. The printing press was around, radios, all, you know, everyone knows this. So that's what the church fathers were doing at their time. They were the media. They were the, the go-betweens. And what they did was they took scriptures because scripture was around. It just wasn't compiled into one specific book yet, the canon. Yes, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And um, people had to go to certain synagogues in order to hear certain scriptures. And they would mainly hear certain scriptures all the time because those are the ones that were in their area. And they'd have to go to different synagogues. So that the church fathers in the second and third century, not the first century, because a lot of the scriptures was written in the first century. Um, um, oh, it's, okay. So let me just jump in real quick. But but uh-huh. yes, scripture. Yes, I, I would. But 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 in the first century, we do have writings from other church fathers um, that, that that would would talk about this. We have this stuff. But I would say this too. Uh, I, I agree with a lot. A lot, not all, but I, I do agree with a lot of what you were saying. But think about this. Um, but for thousands of years. For thousands of years, the church has held to these high standards for 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 the Virgin Mary. It, it wasn't really until the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. So, how do you account for 1,600 years? It, it's kind of hard to convince me for 1,600 years, or I mean, I'm sorry, 1,500 years, that I'm supposed to turn my back on the church that was around before the Bible was there and developing right. through time. So, how would I? Is there anything else that you can? Um, I, how would you well, help yeah, me understand I mean, I that? Sum, like, I what's sum the cause? It all up in one word: Rome. You know, Constantine uh, creating, uh, not creating, but allowing Christianity to no longer be persecuted. Um, the Roman Catholic Church had full control over what anything was said in Scripture. Who they had full control over what was delivered out to the to the common folk um and and then that was your 1500 years i mean the roman cat the the the, uh the papacy had the authority to dethrone kings from their throne they had so much power and even into the 1500 years that you had mentioned still even to that day the common man was still illiterate it was only the wealthy who had access to books and to schooling so that 1500 years was controlled by the Roman Catholic Church. And what they told you is what you had to do or you were condemned to hell. And and during that time when the Reformation started is when certain individuals such as William Tinsdale and uh, Martin Luther and others, they no longer wanted to be under the oppression of the Roman Catholic Church. And they wanted the average citizen to have access to scripture so they can read the way God intended um, okay. for the average man to be able to read scripture. Well, yeah. Okay. So um, I, I just want to say, so you're saying just so it real quick. So you're saying for the, the 1500 years that the, the vast majority of church fathers uh, would hold to the, the current Catholic uh, teaching on, on Mary. You're saying that was kind of like a, cor- a corruption of Rome. So well, until the Protestant no, Reform, more or I, less. I mean, yes, yes, it was a corruption in Rome because, first of all, Rome, you know, as well as I do, anyone knows, you don't have to be a scholar to know that Rome was a pagan empire. And then Constantine, you know, it's it's well documented that Constantine might not even have seen a vision. What he did was he was playing both sides because he had Eastern uh, Eastern Rome and Western Rome were, were fighting, and a lot of his uh, well, captains it, were into the Christian faith. So he utilized what he could to gather his troops together under one banner because he was losing the war. And he got all these people to rally under one banner, and they fought, and that's where he won. And even to the end, they say that he wasn't even – baptized until his deathbed whether that's true or not that's not the point yeah well i think we should get let's because I, I think that's going into like another stuff but let's try to stay on mary but i i i see your little point and, and i will say that um we can maybe take that in a future one but i kind of want right. to try to show but but uh but yeah of course authority would have to come up we're talking about mary uh it, it, we would have to touch on it briefly so i think we did and i would just point to anyone to uh ralph woodrow who, who wrote a book uh, on on this and then later refuted his own book i, I would point people to to read uh, the scholar uh, ralph woodrow but again, let's let's go back on Mary because that could be another contention. Uh, as far I want to, another question uh, on on Mary. Do you remember the woman in the clothes, the clothed with son in the Book of Revelation? Uh, do you not see that as um, a prefiguration or uh, a showing 
uh, Mary? Could it have like high honor in heaven? Do you do you not well, see the connections? All, I'd like to point out anyone that uh, if if you're not like really in depth in biblical knowledge, like myself um, and plenty others out there. When you get into the book of Revelation, you really need to be careful because you can read into so many yes, different I would agree. different things that do not mean what it says, the word itself, because the book of Revelation is meant to be a futuristic telling, which should let you know right away he's not going to be talking about the future of the divinity of Mary because that's the end of the age. That's when Jesus comes to claim everything back. So he's not going to be talking about how much of a, you know, above all everything that mary is going to be when jesus is coming to claim his people so what do you think about my opinion on that what do you think about the what would you say about the woman and the dragon as well and the woman's clothes what what would what would what do you and then also about the mention that the woman uh is a jezebel and how she drinks the blood of the of the saints i mean i don't see mary doing something like that so there's a lot of woman references there with the dragon and the dragon, obviously, which is pretty common, but we think is Lucifer who, himself. Who gave birth? Rules. But who gave birth? To, who gave birth to the male that would rule over the nations but, but with the rod see, of iron? You're taking the words literal again. Just because he says gave birth doesn't mean it's an actual woman boring a child. The word giving birth means something coming out of something. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's a woman giving birth to something. It could mean, you know all this different metaphorical sayings because the what is it the uh um the the false prophet is going to be come from the dragon and then he's also going to give the uh the illusion that one was mortally wounded you know and then he's going to trick people so i mean when you get into revelation there's just so much that it can be going i'd like to stick with mary in the old testament and the new testament because at least that speaks directly about her and it's not metaphorically speaking of Mary. Uh, well, I would say too, again, that I, I would agree that not everything in the, but what I'm saying, it's a typology. Would you, and again, you're you, kind of to bleed on the typology. I know you're saying you kind of, you don't see the Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant. Like you don't see the references that the authors of the gospels are trying well, to that's make. that's what I had mentioned earlier. How, well, how did I put it? I put it fanciful flights of imagination. But the, the, the fathers, Gospels wrote the, the authors, the Gospels, the Luke, I, I, Luke, Mark, I, like Luke, Luke, what? No, I'm saying in, in Luke, in, in the Gospels, I'm not talking about the church. Well, yeah, but we'll put aside the church fathers, but I'm talking about just the Gospels. Don't you see that? Like if you just to read the gospel, let's say, let's say an well, alien gospels, came. The gospels themselves are all about the life of Jesus. I mean, I don't see where you start getting Mary as the key figure in the gospels. The gospels themselves, the whole purpose of the gospels is to give people, uh, uh, you know, information about the life of Jesus. I mean, that's where you tell, a, uh, that's where you tell a non-believer to start. You want them to start in the gospels. They ask you, well, where do I start? Yes. You know, you tell, but, start in the gospels. Start in John, work your way through math, Mark and Luke, and then, you know, uh, because that's discuss- talking directly about Jesus, what he's here for, what he came for. And granted, in the Gospels, they have to mention Mary because Jesus was born through a virgin, you know, which mm-hmm. is a miracle that God gave yeah. to us. Um, Would which, you say she's the new Eve? Would you see her as the new Eve? I don't see her as the new Eve. I know a lot of people like to say that, and again, it's mostly catholics who well like, see, there I mean, are protestants think... what would you uh-huh. say to the uh no, i'm sorry what would you say to protestants that there are protestants that attest to uh mary being the new eve and being the new ark of the covenant that even protestant scholars have seen this if you guys um could look into there, there's a book called behold 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 sorry <laughs> behold your mother um tim staples i believe i might be getting that wrong but it's called behold your mother uh, and they know in that it's not just catholics what i would say of course yeah but but they see it because again what if an alien came down and like here read the bible don't don't read the church fathers don't read nobody and it like what if that alien was an expert like they read it front to back multiple times and they would have been hey wait a minute this is weird david left in the front uh when when the ark came to him and then uh and then and then you uh, her cousin elizabeth john he left and then wait a minute three months in the hill country of judea mary three months in the hill country of judea wait a minute the ark of the covenant contains the word the law and the manah what is it and then 
Mary, Jesus is the bread. He's the bread of life. He's the high priest and he's he's the word made flesh. Like even if an alien would read that, wouldn't you think that they would see those connections but despite the church fathers? That's what I'm saying. Is like even no, if you do I don't read... I don't see that you can make those connections for the simple fact that 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 scripture clearly states who Mary was, what she did. Scripture clearly states who Jesus was, what he came here for. And it clearly states that there's only one mediator between man and God, and that is Christ Jesus. That's it. So outside of that, maybe, if anything, they should have said there's there's one mediator, uh, sub-mediator, his mother. Uh, but even at that, when Jesus was crucified, died, and born, and then went up to heaven, Mary was still alive. Were people coming to her for for prayer? Were they, you know, were they praying to her? Were they uh, deifying her at that moment? I mean, there's nothing in Scripture that talks about her outside of any of that. Yeah, you know? I, and I would say, of course, not deifying her definitely, but the church, the church fathers do attest to her honor. Does. But I, mean, I, I will say this though that. Uh, that that's my next little point that before I forget, because I was trying to hold it in my mind, like what you were saying. And I would kind of have to like say that ignorance of, of ignorance, of uh, absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence. So I, I know you're, you're saying like, well, how come the Bible didn't say exactly like the Bible doesn't talk about the Trinity explicitly. The, there, there are certain things the Bible doesn't, you know, talk about the altar call, the sinner's prayer. Like there's the, the, the Bible doesn't specifically talk about the the end of the apostolic uh, prophecies. Like, but but even Protestants all agree that after the, the apostles, there's no public revelation and even protestants and catholic uh stand together but but yet that those aren't explicitly like the trinity muslims you know mormons uh Jehovah witnesses they would fight you on that like saying that so i think absence we have to be careful of absence of evidence is not evidence and also too one thing you hold um I, I don't think the infinite god the unmoved mover the uncaused cause he's not a zero sum so if i ask you to pray for me if i ask uh, people on Twitter to pay for me. Well, I mean, some of them are going to pray for me and some of them are going to probably uh, threaten to kill, to kill me. But anyway, but if I ask anyone to pray for me, uh, but even the saints that are in heaven, we see Moses coming back from the Old Testament to the new. We see these figures of the Old Testament. Right, but he didn't, he, he came back, but he didn't come back to pray for anyone. He came back while Jesus did his transformation, you know, for whatever purpose he did it for, for P Peter. And I can't remember the other apostle that was with him. Uh, but but in revelations we see the saints offering incense offering prayers our prayers up to heaven right because so, they're 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 spiritual everlasting beings yes they're exactly, not just yes. gone away yes but the fact that we're praying to these people who have since passed and gone into the um you know it says that they're waiting for jesus they're asking yeah. when are you gonna when are you gonna avenge our blood so they're obviously in some type of waiting uh, somehow, I I definitely don't believe it's uh, purgatory, but uh, you know that's another story. Yeah, sure. I'm not sure where purgatory comes from, but um, you know, we're not caught. We're when you ask for me or people on Twitter or whatnot to pray for you, you're asking for other humans who have the ability to have the Holy Spirit within them reach out and they pray to. They're not. They're praying for you to Jesus, to the Father through Jesus, right? So you're praying for me. I'm praying for you. We're two humans praying for each other, hoping the best for that each other. But we're praying to the Father through Jesus. Now, when you start taking a, a different route, like that's a straight line, direct line to the Father through Jesus. That's it. There's no other routes that that prayer can go. Well, I would say, yeah. Saying, but when people start saying, well, I'm going to ask for the, this saint of, uh, I can't remember, I believe my confirmation when I got confirmed was Saint Blaze, the patron saint for the throat. You know, if I had a, a sickness, I'm, I'm asking for Saint Blaze to take my prayers to the Father. You know, there's nowhere in scripture that tells us to pray to saints, to pray to the dead, to pray. As a matter of fact, it tells us not to. It's called necromancy. You well, know, uh, ne no, necromancy is is when you're ask you're you're calling up, you're conjuring up the dead for information or or you're doing you, anything yeah. with the dead. But anything, no, you're messing with them at all. Like like uh, no, no, no. I, I would I would have to disagree with that. Um, necromancy, it, it, it's mis it's a misconception. It's not talking to the or even anything to do with that. It, necromancy is conjuring up the dead and asking for their uh, their help or their future, like I, saying, I, hey. 
hey, tell me the lottery yeah. number. Just an example. I'm, I mean, I know there's right. no lottery, but hey, what's the lottery numbers? They're, you're conjuring up the dead and asking them for like well, like future insight. I pray to Saint Blaze, the patron you, saint of the throat. I'm I'm calling upon the dead and asking him for something. Right? You're it's not. A, it's, controlling them you're not conjuring up them and asking them but we can pray for like a lot a lot of things we can do we can i think it comes down to of course well i wanted to bring up scripture but like i know uh you might not you know the maccabees and and you're not gonna i understand that so i'm not gonna get into that but i just want to mention real quick that it, there are scripture allusions, a lot of it, like revelations, and even in the Old Testament. But again, we, we're not going to agree on the, the you know, the seventy-three versus the sixty-seven books of the canon. That's fine. Uh, but I do want to say that is is the Theotokos, um, is she the mother of God? Is Mary? Is she the mother of God? She's the mother of the earthly flesh God. She is not oh, the okay. mother of God. Okay. There, there's. Hold, hold on, real we, quick, because I I, I, I want to set it up real quick. So. Okay, the reason I'm asking is because you say that she's, you agree half, I guess, you said she's the, the mother of the earthly God. Okay, so where was the divinity when, when she, let's say a fetus, you know, there's abortion, you know, everyone pray for the abortion stuff that's going on. We, Me and you hold hands and we agree that, yeah, that's wrong abortion. Anyway, so let me use an example. Let's say um, uh, eight month or seven month old Jesus. So if Mary is the mother of the seventh month old, you know, the, the fetus that is growing. If, if, uh -huh. if she's the mother of, of, of the fleshly, the human Jesus, where is the divinity at, at that time? So I believe even Mary understood, you know, what she was doing. The angel came to her and told her what was going to happen. But he no, I say, where, where is the divinity of God during the time when well, he said, yeah, in the womb. That. so he told her what was going to happen, right? She was going to get pregnant and she was not going to lay with the man to get this, this pregnancy. So she knew automatically that this wasn't a regular, you know, from what she knows from her cousins and even her birth, you know, she knows it's not regular earthly. So the divinity comes from the fact that the father is God himself. And she is a vessel, which is where a lot of times you guys get this arc um, reference from. But she's the human vessel to allow this human child to be born. But that and, rejects and, and, the and, that rejects the hypostatic union that says that God is fully man and fully divine. And if he how is does it reject fully, it though? I don't understand because she he has to be born right. But he he's has also to come into yes, he's also fully divine. And if he's fully right. divine, the Theotokos. The mother of yeah, God. He is okay, that's divine. he's hundred percent God and hundred percent man. Of I course. agree. I agree. Okay, that's the end of time. Man, this was I tell you I I love doing these with you, man. This is this is so passionate and respectful and great and disagreeing and agreeing when we can. Oh my goodness. I'm tempted to go further, but I told myself that I have to keep it under an hour. Um wow, this is this was great. Um that's the end of our twenty minute um open discussion and I, I really love that. I, I enjoyed this. Now we're just gonna do two minute closing statement. Yeah, I'll go ahead and close first so you can close out your show. Okay, so just two let me put on the clock just two minutes um and just I guess a summary of what we talked about in two minutes. Uh and then we'll go ahead and say goodbye. But I didn't really enjoy this, man. I really, I'm having fun, man. I keep I wanna kinda of, kinda of wanna keep going, but I, I got other yeah, stuff. All right, man. So whenever you're talking, I mean whenever you start talking, that's a two minutes. Okay. So uh basically what I want to tell the listeners is my biggest thing when I was a Catholic is I wanted answers. I, I needed answers. God is not the God of confusion, even though we he's not he's not summed up total in scripture because there's no way he can fit all of his uh, entirety inside the scripture. But he gave us these scriptures for a reason. It got canonized for a reason. These are scripture for a reason. Bible interprets the Bible. There's nothing in there that tells us we need to be praying to anyone other than to God through Jesus only and because i read that and i wanted to learn more that's what started questioning my uh my my devotion towards mary again uh i just want to say in closing that catholics and christians have more in common we don't need to fight over the small stuff we need to agree on what we agree on the divinity of jesus christ he was born uh through a virgin died on the cross raised bodily fully bodily on the third day and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and you know we all just need to come together pray for peace on earth because things are going crazy and i believe if uh, a bunch of uh, americans got together and repented and asked god for forgiveness things might change around for us if not just get right get your house right because the lord is coming all right i'm gonna go ahead and, and do my opening statements Okay, yeah, I would agree uh, w- with your comments too that that we we need to hold hands and and be shoulder to shoulder fighting this culture as as all Christians again. So I, I agree on that too. And but it is important to have you know our, our, our topics on. No, we disagree and we did it respectfully. And I thank you for coming here. But again, uh, nearly all the church fathers hold the Catholic teachings about uh, Mary and Luke. We see it says all generations will call me blessed. In the book of Daniel, King Nebuchadnezzar falls upon his face, gives homage to Daniel, and commands an offering and incense be offered up to him, uh, but not as a god, but as the highest honor. And so we see in Numbers, again, in Numbers, uh, God tells Moses to fashion the bronze serpent, the snake. God could have just easily, how come they couldn't go to God and just say, hey, God, uh, do this. But yet Moses, not even Moses, they said to Moses, they had to go to this, look upon the snake. And we see that allusion to, of course, typology to Jesus being hung on the pole and being looked at, the snake. And um, almost unanimously, everybody agrees that's a typology pointing to Jesus. In Luke, of course, we see Gabriel uh, going to Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. In Hebrews, we see a great cloud of, of witnesses. This is in the New Testament um, that they're 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 clinging and they're cheering for us to persevere the race that has been set before us. In Hebrews, so I would say that it is it's good to pray for others, and I would say that remember, even if they are living or dead, we're all one body, and remember. Uh, God, the hypostatic union, he is fully divine, fully man. And if Mary had the little fetus, the human, fully fetus, human baby Jesus, he is also, he was also fully, fully divine as well in her womb. And um, if God is fully man, fully divine in the womb, therefore, it makes sense that uh, Mary is the mother of God, ex facto. Okay, so man, again, once again, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, it's hard to find people that could like disagree passionately, but yet keep it charitable and keep it respectful and and entertaining. So I enjoy this. Uh, I want to do many many more because there's so many different topics. Uh, I think this was a perfect episode just just on Mary and everything. And of course, there's a lot of stuff. But again, yeah, I mean, there's this time of abortion. Everybody pray because a lot of 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 protestants and 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 like more of the people that are following scripture and the bible and 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 all this stuff like they have a lot in common with catholics like you said um not people that are twisting it like you know liberation theology or very extremely liberal biblical scholarship we would we would both me and you would both stand against that and and we would fight that so um yeah it's good talk about things we disagree and what we agree on this was entertaining. Thank you for coming on the show again at Faith, Reason, and Geekdom. I'm Roger, and that is Lenaden. If you want to go ahead and sign us off. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Hopefully, we can get into this some more. Uh, I Just by uh, Roger's closing comments, I have plenty to push back on there alone. Uh, but, you know, we got to save it for another time. And thank you guys very much. I appreciate it and hope to, hear from, hope to speak with, with you again soon. Okay, God bless you.